back to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm here today to give you my uh, October wrap up. Um, I Reading in October was a challenge for me. I was very, very busy, but I did manage to read five books. So here they are. For October's Victober, a celebration of Victorian literature, I decided to read Dracula by Bram Stoker and Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. I listened to Dracula on audio and I really enjoyed the experience. It was so atmospheric. I really enjoyed reading Dracula. I felt transported to this otherworldly place, uh, the gothic descriptions of Dracula's castle, the, uh, the very immediate and kind of freaky sensations that were coming from the book were just so much fun to read, to listen to. Uh, I do think that the beginning, the first quarter or first third of the book that was focused on, um, the experience of the young solicitor going to Dracula's castle was the strongest part of the novel, but um, I really enjoyed most of it. And I think that the, I didn't realize that it was told through journal entries and letters. And that is just a style that works really well on audio, I think. And it also, uh, switches the perspective of the story in this very entertaining way for the most part. There were certainly lots of things about it that are were very dated. I mean, the kind of antiquated views of women's place in society and things like that were, you know, things that are just so outdated now. Um, but as a story, as this immersive experience, I really, really enjoyed it, and um, it really made my October highly entertaining. It was an 18-hour audiobook, and I, you know, sped through it, so I think that's a good testament to it. The second book that I read for Victober was Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte, and um, I enjoyed it. I thought that it was actually when you're comparing it to a lot of the other Victorian female novelists, I think Anne Bronte has a really nice niche that is not, um, is, is kind of unique to her. Of course, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte is, you know, this very famous novel with countless adaptations and, you know, is, is many people's favorite novel of all time. And I really enjoyed Jane Eyre. But the thing about Agnes Grey that I really liked was that there was not an apologetic way of viewing the world. I think I would say that Anne, out of the three Bronte sisters, had this way of being very blunt um, about society. And she believed that there were, you know, um, in the higher classes, there were flaws. And she was very clear about depicting those in Agnes Grey. And I really appreciated that perspective. Um, I also liked that she didn't have as much of a romantic roller coaster type of experience in that book as a lot of the other ones have. Um, I, I liked uh, just the simplicity of the story, um, but also like, again, that kind of underlying commentary that was there that I don't think was really present in Jane Eyre. I don't think it was really, um, part of the message of Jane Eyre in the way that it is in Agnes Grey. So I, yeah, I appreciated that. I don't think I fell in love with the characters necessarily, but I did care about what was happening to Agnes, um, and to her, um, her young, um, charge who goes off and marries in maybe not the best, um, person. 
and I, of course I wanted I wanted a happy resolution at the end um, so I enjoyed reading it I think I will definitely read the tenant of Wildfell Hall um, in future I think Anne um, impressed me with her writing style in 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 this kind of quieter way and I, I liked that so yeah I will definitely read her other novel in the future I also read a book of poetry in October, The uh, Disgrifist by Canicia Lebrun. And Canicia Lebrun is a Canadian poet. Uh, she just won a very prestigious poetry award for this collection, and I purchased this last year, so I thought it was time to read it. Um, I don't think that the style of uh, Lebrun's poetry is necessarily one that resonates with me. Um, there is a lot of um, dialogue in, in an, a lot of the sections of the poems with a character called Jejun, and um, I didn't find that that like necessarily worked for me as, as a poetry style. The poems that I liked the best were in um, Act 4, Four, and they were a little bit more um, enclosed thoughts. Um, a lot of the poems to Jay June were like these continuous prose, so they would just um, not have a title and not have an, a start or end, and they would just kind of flow into each other. And I found that a bit difficult to follow. I wasn't really picking up a lot from them. Um, I think I've said before that what I look for the most out of poetry is a kind of visual painting. So I like to have words put together in this way that creates these visuals in my head. And while I think that Le Brin has a beautiful way with language, um, I, I couldn't make those pictures. They weren't really forming for me from her work. Um, there were a few poems that I dog-eared uh, in here that I did like, uh, but overall the collection was not one that blew me away. I also read The Boat People by Sharon Bala. The Boat People was a finalist for the 2018 Canada Reads competition, and I was very much impressed by that novel. It follows three perspectives on a refugee um, experience. The refugee arriving in Canada, um, a Tamil refugee is coming from Sri Lanka on a boat that was about 500 people. And so you have a one perspective of um, a father and his son arriving here. You also get the pa his past in Sri Lanka. And so you get to understand um, how he was um, affected by the um, war and, and conflicts that were going on around him at that time. Uh, you also have the perspective of a young law student who is of Sri Lankan descent uh, but grew up and was born in Canada and so she has some connections to Sri Lanka but there's a lot of um, lack of communication about how her family fits into um, that the conflicts that are happening now and how her family has adapted to living in Canada. And then you have Grace, who is an educator for the hearings that the refugees have to go to on to whether or not they're allowed to stay in Canada. And her family uh, was interned during World War II because they were of Japanese descent. And so all of these perspectives play with each other in this novel and give you a very complex and layered interpretation of the refugee experience. And so I thought it was very well done, um, very well thought out, and so important to read because when you're trying to, as a, you know, a settler on this land, my family immigrated to Canada many years ago so I am very much removed from their experience and because we were coming from Western Europe we were not you know looked at as an other you know we were integrated into the mainstream um, and so 
to experience that is it's just not an experience that I can have firsthand. And so reading it was was really important, I think, because it gave you all these different perspectives, any uh, interpretation of that situation that you could have in your brain was was talked about in that novel. And so I would really appreciated uh, Sharon Bala's way of presenting the information and her way of um, giving you these characters that you could root for or or be angry with and and grapple with their decisions and ultimately you know she shows you how complex the refugee experience is um how it's when uh, the western countries to which a lot of refugees are coming to tend to make these black and white rules and they're like you're either you know this or that tell us which one and so many of them are in this place of like having to be in the middle because it's completely gray area so i just thought the book was brilliant at showing that um experience and i would highly recommend it and the last novel that I finished in October was Freshwater by Kweke Emeze. And um, I enjoyed it. Uh, and I think that I didn't enjoy it as much as their first novel that I read, The Death of Vivek OG, which I read earlier this year. So I think Freshwater has a very different feel from The Death of Vivek OG. And um, you're either going to prefer one or the other. Freshwater itself, um, the spirituality of, of the journey that you're going on with the character in this book and their many selves, the we, um, the idea of being, you know, human being possessed by a god, um, all of that was super interesting. Obviously, there's a lot of difficult subject matter in freshwater, so we're think you know things around suicide, things around um, abuse, neglect, um, all those things. Very heavy and 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 layered things. Um, I loved the internal dialogues that were going on for the characters and how they they conveyed that. Um, but I didn't have the emotional connection to Freshwater that I did to the death of Vivek Oji. So, um, to me, in just the way that I read and the way that I'm this emotional reader who wants to connect to the characters, um, the death of Vivek Oji to me was more successful, uh, than Freshwater, but I definitely enjoyed it. And I think it is a book that, um, will challenge you and will present a way of looking at the world that is unique and um and i think it would make a fantastic movie so i hope that someone writes a screenplay and makes that into a movie because i think the visuals in it uh the the way it's structured you know the things that it's tackling i think would make a very compelling film Okay, so those were the books, the five books that I finished in October. I have taken on quite a few more for November, so hopefully um, I will be back again soon to share my November reading with you, and I thank you so much for watching.